Welcome to the Advanced Combat Tutorial. In our last tutorial, we touched upon some of the basics of gameplay within Sanctus Reach. While this tutorial is a bit more complex, it details some very important aspects which will help you survive the hellscape that is Alaric Prime. Cover is an extremely important part of Sanctus Reach. Much like the tabletop game itself, cover provides a defensive barrier to avoid getting hit by enemy fire. Here we are going to target an enemy unit behind cover. Note that there is partial cover represented by a half shield and full cover represented by a full shield. Keep in mind, however, that you can only shoot at targets which are in your line of sight and also in range. There is an exception to this rule. Certain weapons such as the Whirlwind, as well as throwable explosives such as the Grenade, can often be thrown over obstacles, but only if one of your other units can see the target. Otherwise, the Fog of War still applies. While objects such as trees and buildings provide excellent cover, they also block your line of sight so that you cannot shoot through them at an enemy target. There are other forms of cover, however, such as barricades, rubble, fallen trees that will allow you a line of sight, but can block missiles and bullets. If you are adjacent to a cover tile, it does not block your outgoing fire, as you, you're assumed to be crouching behind it and then leaning over to shoot, but will block incoming fire. So this is the ideal place to stand. Here we're going to mouse over a piece of cover. You can see the amount of cover it provides. This decreases the chance of the enemy striking you. You can have multiple cover tiles between you and the firing unit, each one further reducing their chance to hit you. Essentially, the more cover you have, the more chance you'll survive. Note that when an enemy unit is adjacent to the cover you're hiding behind, they also ignore that cover and are assumed to lean over it to shoot, so try to avoid letting the enemy get that close. Chance to hit is reduced significantly by each piece of cover. As an example, while one barricade may provide you with a 25% chance of not being hit, two pieces of cover raises that probability to 50%, further providing you with valuable defensive bonuses. Over time, as cover is hit by stray or deliberate shots, it will be reduced until eventually it is completely destroyed. It will then disappear and no longer provide cover. You should use this to your advantage. At times, you may need to completely blow away cover in order to reach an enemy cowering in fear behind it. You can also use this as a way to remove blocking terrain and create a new path through the map. Friendly fire is an unfortunate reality in Sanctus Reach. You'll want to be careful about the placement of your units, as occasionally you may accidentally fire upon one of your own men. Friendly fire incidents can be reduced by keeping your own men out of your line of sight, but often in narrow gullies, some risks may need to be taken. Note, if you are adjacent to a friendly unit, you'll be able to fire through them safely. But if there is any distance whatsoever between you and them, there is a chance that they'll be hit by your shots. Any unit potentially in harm's way will be marked with a shield icon, just like blocking terrain. As an orc, friendly fire is less of a concern. Well, as long as it's you doing the firing anyway. Remember, your job is to overrun the enemy in the Great War. If a few Gretchen have to die to make that happen, then so be it. Flamer units work a bit differently in their targeting system as they target an adjacent tile and not an enemy unit. There does not need to be an enemy unit on that tile and the flame spreads out from that point. The tiles that will be affected are clearly marked, so you want to position your flamers and their attack carefully for best effect and to avoid hitting your own men. Also remember flamers do not have reaction shots. Flamers are mostly effective against unarmored units. The flames are fairly useless against an orc war machine, but can turn multiple squads of orcs into a pile of ashes in seconds. Long Fang missile units are very useful as they can launch crack or frag missiles at the enemy. Frag missiles are anti-personnel weapons. They have a large area of effect and are good against large numbers of unarmored infantry units. Crack missiles, on the other hand, are armor-piercing specialists. While they may not have the same area of effect as the devastating frag missile, their specific use is to pierce and take down vicious orc war machines such as Death Dreads and Killicans. Now let's talk about morale. At the beginning of each battle, your units will start off with a high morale level at around 100. Although some units may have slightly higher or lower morale depending on their level of bravery. Being attacked reduces morale and the reduction depends on the shock value of the attacking weapon. As an example, flamers have extremely high shock value and inflict serious morale reduction. Bullets can be fished out later, but who's going to fix third degree burns? Units become shaken when their morale drops below 50. 
Shaken units have reduced accuracy and lose their ability to use reaction fire. They are also less effective in a melee situation. They can still fire, but they lose their zone of control, so no longer can they lock other units in combat. So this is a good way actually to save stranded units. You may even have to flame your own unit to help free them, but they'll thank you later. Panic occurs when a unit's morale drops below 25. A panicked unit has the same penalties as a shaken unit, but it also can't advance. If it drops below zero, the unit becomes broken, and it's practically useless. Broken units have a broken skull symbol. They cannot attack or do just about anything besides cower in fear. However, units regain their morale little by little, so over time, if you allow your men to rest, they will slowly regain some morale. Some hero units can also raise morale of nearby forces. The Wolf Howl ability is a good example of this. Transport units can carry infantry into battle. They provide armored protection, they often have heavy weapons, and moving in a transport vehicle is much faster than walking. Note that they can get bogged down in rough terrain, in which case dismounting and proceeding on foot is suggested. Some units such as land speeders can hover over obstacles. These units are perfect for scouting a map to locate your enemy. The famed Space Marine Assault Squads also have jetpacks which can jump over cover. These units can often get to places where other Space Wolves can only dream of arriving at. Certain hero units have some exceptional special kits and roles that assist them dramatically in combat. Make sure you learn the strengths and weaknesses of your leaders as they will be extremely useful in achieving final victory. Now let's get into the nitty gritty details of combat. As you play the game, you will soon learn that certain weapons excel at different abilities. The way combat can be calculated is as follows. First, you need to check if you hit the enemy, taking into account your basic weapon abilities. Your unit modifiers, cover, morale, speed of your target to calculate your chance to hit. If you do manage to hit your target, you inflict the base damage of your weapon. Depending on your weapon power, there is a chance that you will score a critical hit on your enemy. For instance, if your weapon power is 30, and you have a 30% chance of scoring a critical hit, which does double the damage of your weapon to the enemy target. Some weapons also have piercing damage. This is calculated the same way as normal damage, but instead of power, it uses the AP value to determine the possibility of critical hits. Piercing damage can only be reduced by heavy armor. Ballistic armor is of absolutely no use against the devastating power of the heavy weapon. Units have different levels of armor depending on which part of them is being targeted. As an example, the front of your tank units have very high levels of armor, making them extremely hard to destroy if being fired upon from the front. The sides tend to be weaker, and the rear the weakest, so rear attacks are generally the most effective. Armor helps to reduce the damage in general. Ballistic armor reduces normal damage, and heavy armor reduces all damage. This means that heavily armored units can be more or less immune to certain weapons, as long as these weapons do not have specific armor-piercing abilities. Ballistic armor has a chance to reduce damage. A ballistic armor value of 50 means you have about a 50% chance to reduce damage. Damage reduction ranges from half damage to 1 8 damage reduction, depending on how successful the roll was. Heavy armor is extremely durable. We're talking a serious, serious level of protection here. While it is possible to pierce heavy armor with certain weapons, most normal weapons will simply bounce right off, only very rarely managing to pierce through and do any damage at all. 